So I can appreciate that there's many different people here. Not everyone's on their own palliative journey, um, but it's very possible that you are or that we've all been a part of one or we will be in the future. And so the principles that we're gonna discuss can relate to situations that are outside the palliative journey as well. Um, the beautiful thing about essential oils is that there really isn't a situation that they can't be of some benefit in. And so what I wanna teach you today is what essential oils are, uh, why purity and quality of essential oils matter so much, why they are great tools to use on the palliative journey, how you can use them. And then I wanna just uh, give you an experience um, so that you can experience the benefits after we finish. So we're gonna make a little something at the end with what you have in your little bag there. And so what I also wanna say is this is not meant to replace any medical care prescribed by your healthcare professional. It's not meant to treat, cure, or any, to, uh, any disease. It's just meant to be a tool for you to use to support you on your, on your health journey. And so always speak to a physician or a pharmacist uh, before using essential oils or any natural product, really. If you're taking any medication or going through any treatment, um, especially. Uh, in my experience uh, and the practitioners that I've talked to, um, using the oils aromatically and topically has not been an issue, but it's always important just to find out for your own specific situation. So let's start at the beginning. What are essential oils? Some people don't even know what they are. So what they are is they are the natural aromatic compounds that are extracted from plants. We find them inside roots, seeds, flowers, or the bark of a plant. They're highly potent. They're concentrated chemical constituents. Um, and to the plant, the essential oil is what provides it with its scent. It protects it from hazardous environmental conditions. It helps heal it if it's been damaged and it even assists with things like pollination of the plant. And so my favorite example just to illustrate how you've already experienced essential oils in your life is when you peel an orange. So when you break open the peel of an orange, you are releasing the essential oil molecules that are found in the peel into the air. And that's why you smell that beautiful smell of orange. That's what you're releasing into the air. So it's really as simple as that. We experience essential oils in our life, in our daily life all the time. Um, and so they're most commonly extracted from plants through what's called steam distillation, but they can also be expressed um, manually or cold pressed uh, from the peel of citrus fruits. So that's how they get them out of the citrus fruits is they cold press them. And so the chemical makeup of an essential oil is highly complex. Um, we won't go into all of those details, but it's a, a lot of biochemistry. Um, but one essential oil might consist of hundreds of different constituents. And that's why one essential oil can help with a lot of different things. So example, peppermint, which is one of the ones that you have that can be effective at cooling down the body. It can be effective at helping with headaches. It can support digestion. So it can do lots of different things in our body because it's so complex. And despite their growing popularity um, in natural health, essential oils are not anything new. So they have been around for thousands and thousands of years and there's extensive documentation on the benefits they've offered throughout history. So Egyptians were the first to use aromatic essences and resins. There's traces of essential oils found in Egyptian tombs and on mummy bandages. Um, there was even recently, um, not recently, in 1922, found um, pots of frankincense that were, that were in a tomb and they still had the scent of frankincense like thousands of years later, which is just amazing. Um, Greeks and Romans use essential oils for therapeutic massage, for personal hygiene, and just to promote all around health. Um, Hippocrates advocated for the aromatic baths and actually like fumigation um, for medicinal purposes with essential oils. And then French chemists um, in 1887 have been credited for discovering the antibacterial properties of essential oils. And so one reported after burning his hand in a laboratory accident in 1910, he used lavender oil. Uh, he reported his pain diminished, the gas gangrene ended and his hand healed without any infection. Uh, and then they were used in World War II as well to help treat infections and wounds of soldiers. And so there's all of this history, but there's also a growing amount of evidence that's building um, now with more and more research that's being done just to demonstrate the healing properties of the oils for so many physical and emotional health concerns. So why would we use essential oils? Um, so they are safe. When they're used responsibly, essential oils are very safe. They have very few contraindications or unintended reactions. 
they're effective, they're highly concentrated, they work simultaneously on our emotional, physical, and spiritual levels of health. They can offer benefits without any side effects. Um, they often have side benefits as well. So like we were talking about how peppermint can have all, affect all those different parts of our body. Um, they're really versatile, right? So same as peppermint, lavender, right? Lavender is another one that can be used for a variety of purposes. So it's excellent for calming the mind. It's really great for supporting a restful sleep, but it's also really calming and healing to the skin. Um, they're easy to use. So we'll talk about the different ways that you can use them, but once you know the basics, it's really easy and it's really fun to actually experiment with different things and, and blend things together. Um, you really can't go wrong. Um, also to reduce our toxic load. So, so many products that we use in our day-to-day -day lives are filled with synthetic chemicals and synthetic fragrances. And there's more and more evidence to show that these are really having detrimental effects on our health. And so pure essential oils um, offer an alternative way to, um, to synthetic products. So they can not only offer us these health benefits, but they also make excellent like cleansing, they have cleansing and purifying properties. Um, so we can use them to freshen our home as a, you know, instead of using air fresheners or plugins or candles or um, different toxic cleaners. So it's really good for lots of different things. And I really just want to touch on purity because oil purity can't be overstated. So unfortunately, the essential oil industry has been around for a long time, but it's not very well regulated. And so a lot of essential oils that claim to be 100% pure may not actually be 100% pure. And so many oils have been tested and found that they can be contaminated or adulterated with synthetic chemicals, which can actually come, cause harm to our body. And this is really the opposite effect that we're trying to achieve. And so a significant part of the issue is really how the oils are sourced and traded um, by brokers before they actually get into the consumer's hands. So they'll often taint their oils with cheaper, but similar oils. Um, oils from a different species or maybe less expensive parts of the same plant uh, and oftentimes even use like isolated synthetic compounds that have been created in a lab. So not using the natural constituent uh, because it's cheaper to produce a synthetic version. And so unfortunately, this is done to generate more profits for the trader, but ultimately it just brings us a less effective product. And so some common adulterations that are happening are adding like synthetic menthol to peppermint oil, adding something called lavendin to lavender, or they use cinnamon leaf instead of cinnamon bark. Um, sometimes there's subtle changes for people that don't know, but they don't always have the same effect on our body. Um, or using a synthetic is going to have the opposite effect than we want it to have on our body. And so we really get the best benefit from the oil when it comes unchanged from the plant, right? So just like peeling that orange, you just want the essential oil as it naturally comes from the orange. And also the plant, you want it to come from a place where it thrives. So as an example, we can all grow lavender in our backyards, but we're gonna get more therapeutic benefit from lavender that's grown in somewhere like Bulgaria or the South of France, where all the growing conditions are optimal for that plant. And then I just wanna um, say these beautiful women here are harvesting wintergreen from Nepal. And so, if you're buying essential oils for therapeutic use, like we'll be talking about today, is you want something that you know and can trust that's completely natural and safe. And like most situations, you get what you pay for, right? Essential oils are no different. So in a market where everybody claims to have pure essential oils, how do you really know if what you're using is pure? And so if you want um, just to know that you're using completely pure oils, it's just you can do your research with the company and find out if the company that you plan to buy from takes the following precautions, right? Just to ensure the quality of their oil. So making sure that they're sustainably and responsibly sourced, where their oils come from, can they be traced? Um, is the company personally involved in the farming and cultivation process? Are they using the right extraction methods? Are they using brokers and traders in their process? Um, do they do extensive and thorough testing? Right? So are they actually testing themselves for adulteration and contamination? Um, do they have scientists on their teams that can read and interpret these results? Um, and then transparency. So do they use third-party testing? Do they make those test results public right, for every single oil? And can you easily access those? Um, making sure that they provide clear and accessible safety and usage information. Right. So are they giving you education, showing customers how to use their oil safely? And then do they take a clinical approach to development and research? And so 
just so you know, like what you have, what I've given you in your pack, is they, those are from a company called doTERRA. And they're what I've been using exclusively for the last five years after finding out what I've just told you and doing research of my own, just to know that doTERRA ticks all of these boxes. Like they don't own, just tick all these boxes, but they're actually leading the industry in purity and encouraging other companies to rise to these standards. And so they also deliberately choose locations to source the oils where they can improve the individual, social, economic, and environmental well-being while still producing the highest quality oils. Uh, and they also have a team of medical advisors that collaborates with the universities and medical communities, and they're continuing to develop research on essential oils and their applications. So just when you're, if you use essential oils already, or, oh, sorry, I see someone's asking questions. Should we take notes or we can get some info? I can send you the slides after. You can take notes, but I can send you the slides too. Um, if you are just going out and, and this is something that you want to look into, just make sure that you um, just have these things in mind, right? And just knowing that not all essential oils are created equally. Um, and if you want a little bit more information on doTERRA's sourcing and how they do it, there's a website, um, www.sourcetoyou.com. So source to you.com. And that just talks about um, all the things that you should look for as well. Okay, so let's talk about how you can use them and we'll experience some of the oils that you have. So everyone has their oils, their little sample pack with them, hopefully. Um, so first way that you can use them is aromatically. This is probably the way that most people know about, right? So smelling the oils, it's the easiest, the quickest way to experience them. Uh, it's as simple as putting a drop in your hand and smelling it. You can use a diffuser. So if I don't know if you guys have seen a diffuser before, this is just an example of a little one. Basically you put water inside, you fill it with water, add a couple drops of essential oils, um, and then it puts a mist out and you can have, it has different settings on it. So that's a diffuser, plugs into the wall. Um, you can use a cotton ball, you can use a little inhaler stick. So you have one of these, this is what we're gonna make later on. So a little inhaler stick that you can use. You can use your hair as a diffuser, right? You can use essential oil jewelry. I mean, there's tons of ways to get aromatic benefits um, from the essential oils. And how this works in our body is the molecules travel up your nose to the olfactory nerves, um, they transmit single signals to the limbic system in the brain, right? So our limbic system is responsible for controlling memory, learning, emotions, stress levels, motivation, and so many other things. So the limbic system then initiates physiological responses in the body by releasing hormones, releasing chemicals, different neurotransmitters, and those influence different body functions, right? So including like pain, perception, wakefulness, relaxation, and just an overall sense of well-being. So eventually this cascade of events can modify emotions and behaviors and generate memories that can cause these psychophysiological responses. And so using them aromatically can help things like mental fatigue, relieving stress, um, helping with uh, restful night's sleep, supporting respiratory concerns as well as we breathe them in um, and purifying the air as well. So let's experience them together aromatically. Um, let's, we'll start with peppermint. So you guys have the little drams there. If anyone's wearing glasses, just put your glasses on top of your head. Okay, peppermint is awesome for just a quick pick me up. I think you're all still with me, but this will help you to get through the rest. <laughs> um, so take off the top of your little uh, dram. And so these little guys, you actually, when you, when you put your hand out and you turn it over, you're gonna tap the bottom. And when you tap it out, it's gonna tap a quarter drop into your hand. So just a quarter drop of the oil, okay? So what you wanna do once you've done that is rub it into your hands, close your eyes, and then just take in, you don't have to put your hands like right onto your face, like don't touch your face, but just put them kind of outside, cup, cup around your nose, and then just take like three or four deep breaths in. Is everybody getting it out okay? I can't see everybody at the same time. Good. Awesome. So that was just, I mean, you can tell that was only a quarter drop of peppermint, right? Like that is 
potent, right? Like you don't need a lot to get the benefit of it. Okay, so the actually other one that goes really nicely with peppermint is if you take your orange and you can just put a little bit of the orange on top of that peppermint, same thing, just tap out a quarter drop, rub it in. And those two together are really great for just like energizing and, and feeling uplifted. Hmm, so good. And then you can take that um, and you can actually rub it up, rub what's left on your hands. So whatever doesn't absorb into your skin with the nature of essential oils will actually evaporate into the air. So you find that you're not left with any like oily residue on your hands. And that's another way that you know that they're pure because you don't end up with anything else left on your hands. But you can rub it on the back of your neck with the peppermint. You'll feel, um, you'll start to feel a little bit of a cooling sensation. Um, if you feel like you have really sensitive skin, just put a little bit of carrier oil on there as well. Or if you feel like it's too tingly, um, then you can put carrier oil on as well. We'll talk about um, topical use next. So using the oils topically, like you did there, just putting on the back of your neck is where they're actually gonna penetrate the tissues and be absorbed in the skin and then absorbed into the bloodstream. So because cells are surrounded by a lipid membrane and essential oils are lipid based, essential oils can actually cross through the cell membrane, penetrate the cell membrane, and they can affect cell function and influence our well-being that way. And so many of the oils are really gentle. They can be applied directly to the skin. Um, but when you are applying oils, you can also dilute them with a carrier oil just to avoid any skin sensitivity. So it's really good to do that with spicier oils. So things like cinnamon or oregano, anything that's a spice, even, even ginger, like you've got, you guys have ginger, even ginger. Um, would be good. This is the first time to, to dilute it first. And so what that does is also helps slow down the absorption and actually holds the essential oil in the area where you applied it a little bit longer. So especially if you're trying to, like if you're helping like uh, a skin issue and you want to keep it in that area or some discomfort in an area, you would, you could dilute it with a carrier oil. It would help keep it in that area longer. Um, carrier oil, nice, felt it to my toes. So I'm just seeing a few things pop up in the chat. I love it. <laughs> Um, so if you did have a sensitivity reaction, it's quite rare, um, but if you did have a sensitivity reaction, what you would want to do is use oil. So any oil that you have around, not water, because water and oils repel each other. So if you put water on a sensitivity reaction from essential oil, it's actually just going to drive it into your skin further. So use oil to dilute it. That's the better thing to do. You can use anything. I mean, my son, when he was... <laughs> When we first started using the oils, he managed to like climb up onto the counter, open the cupboard, get my oregano oil out of my, I don't know why of all the oils he picked oregano, grab that out of there and then lick, open it and then lick it. So needless to say, he did not like that. It was very spicy, <laughs> but instead of giving him water, right, which is kind of your first reaction, I was like, take a spoonful of olive oil. You're not going to like this either, but this is going to help calm it down. So if that ever happens on your skin or anywhere, um, just remember to use oil. So where you apply an oil topically is going to depend on the purpose of application, right? So um, like I said, for pain or a skin issue, you're going to put it on the area where you're having that issue. But the bottoms of the feet are also a really great general place to put oils uh, because they're less prone to sensitivity um, than other parts of our body. But also if you look at reflexology points, our entire bodies are represented on our feet. And so um, it's a great, great general place to put them. Um, you can add oils to massage oil, right? For like a hand massage, a foot massage, a back massage. They're really, really lovely. Um, you can add them to lotions or moisturizers, even just to naturally fragrance them. So in part of our, you know, just reducing our toxic load, we've gone to many like fragrance-free products, like natural fragrance-free products. And so you can use essential oils to um, naturally fragrance these. Um, just, yeah, another way to, to get rid of another synthetic fragrance. Um, also you can use roller bottles. So this is a pre-made roller bottle, um, or you can make your own as well. So I'll just show you this one easier to see. So you can, this is one that I've just made for headaches, um, but you can, you add your oils to it 
And there's different dilution rates, just depending on age and the oils that you're using or the issue that you're trying to address. But you just put your essential oils in it. Usually like for something this size, I'm probably putting 15 to 20 drops in, like not very much, which would fill it up to about here. And then the rest I'm filling with fractionated coconut oil. And so that is just a, li a coconut oil that stays liquid. And so the reason we use fractionated coconut oil is just because it's odorless, um, it absorbs really well into the body. So no matter where you put it, it's not gonna be greasy. Um, so that's what we use there to make a roller bottle. And then the next way that you can use them is internally. So many of the essential oils can be ingested. So um, each of the essential oils possesses a different chemical structure, right? And it provides the body with um, different benefits. So um, some essential oils can be used internally to support like gastrointestinal health or maintain immune function, um, offer different cleansing benefits. And so, um, you know, you've probably heard of people taking like oil of oregano, right? If, they, if they're feeling sick. So that's the same idea. It's just usually when you buy oil of oregano, it's already diluted with a carrier oil. So it usually comes in olive oil. So it's not the pure essential oil. Um, and so if you were going to use oil of oregano, for example, you could either um, put it in your own carrier oil to take it internally, or you can use something that's called a veggie cap. And so this is just an empty little capsule that you can put the oils in. We won't talk about um, too much about um, using them internally in this, um, like in the, in the next part of the session, but I just wanted to mention it because if you want to, you can take your um, orange oil or your peppermint. I would suggest the orange as a first way to start. And I love to flavor my water with essential oil. So I just put, you could just do, cause it's only a quarter drop to start. You could just put a little tap in and then just stir it up with your finger. Um, I use it in my sparkling water, my soda stream. You put ginger oil in my smoothie. Um, I make peppermint tea with my peppermint oil instead of using peppermint tea. And just to give you guys an idea of, um, of potency. So one drop of peppermint oil is equivalent to 28 cups of peppermint tea leaves in terms of therapeutic benefits. So you don't need a lot. I even don't even put a full drop in. I just sort of touch the top of my bottle and put a little bit on the inside of my mug. And I find that's enough. I did that for my daughter the other day. If she wanted peppermint hot chocolate. So I just took like the tiniest little bit and put it on the inside of the mug with her hot chocolate. And it was, it was perfect. Um, you can add them to recipes. I looked at my peppermint extract years ago and I realized it was just alcohol and some chemicals not actually any peppermint in there. <laughs> um, so using pure peppermint oil that's actually steam distilled from the leaves seems like a much healthier choice. So I'll just put a couple of drops in my brownie recipe. And so with the samples that you have, um, peppermint and wild orange and ginger could all be used internally. So you can, you could try those out. And again, a quarter drop would probably be all you need to start with. Remember always better to start with less and you can always add more. So now let's, you know, um, a little bit more of the basics, right? Let's look at how we can use these oils and how they can be supportive for the palliative journey. So there are going to be physical, emotional, spiritual challenges for not only the person who's been diagnosed with a life-threatening illness, but also for their loved ones and caregivers. So it's so important that you, if you are a caregiver, that you're also taking care of your own wellness because we all know we can't pour water from an empty pitcher. So it's so important to take care of uh, ourselves too. And so I would say it's also really hard for anyone to prepare themselves in advance for all the emotions that are going to come up as part of this journey. And so it's really helpful to surround yourself with as much support as possible and have the tools at the ready. And so while each person's experience is unique, there are going to be shared physical, emotional, and spiritual challenges. And essential oils are just one of these tools that you can have on hand because they have an exceptional ability to influence all of these areas. Um, of well-being. And so they are a really great solution because they're non-invasive. Um, they work directly in the areas of the brain that influence mood, emotions, and pain. And there is evidence to show um, their efficacy. So let's talk a little bit first about the some of the physical challenges. And the goal of holistic care is to provide the best quality of life right? But there's common symptoms that are going to arise. And so this isn't a complete list by any means, but just a, a few examples in which the oils can be helpful. Um, so for pain and discomfort, there's many different types of pain, um, but it's also important to note that pain is often more than just a physical experience. It's often influenced by emotions as well. 
And so essential oils can be effective because they offer support for both the physical and the emotional aspects of pain. And pain could be a whole topic in itself. So I'm not gonna get into all the details of it, but one of the most beautiful ways that we can address pain um, and using the oils is really with combining it with loving touch. And so it's so restorative to the key body systems. It promotes relaxation. So this can be done to the area of concern, but it's, if it's not comfortable to a painful area, then a really great way is to use a gentle hand massage or gentle foot massage can also be really, really effective. And there is a um, few oils that are, that are good for pain. Um, I'm gonna give you a little recipe for, for a blend that you could make. And so it's using um, peppermint oil, an oil called copaiba, bergamot, lavender, and ginger. And it doesn't mean that you have to have all of these. You could use whatever you had. So, I mean, even using peppermint um, serenity that you have is lavender based. So peppermint serenity and ginger could be helpful as well. And so you would mix these um, in a bottle. So in a 120 mil bottle, you would put say 15 to 20 drops of peppermint, 10 to 15 drops of copaiba, 10 to 15 drops of bergamot, eight to 12 drops of lavender, five to eight drops of ginger, top it with the fractionated coconut oil or whatever oil of your choice, shake it up to blend it. And then you've got a massage oil that you can use time and time again um, for pain. And you would just massage that on the areas. Um, fatigue is another um, area where oils can be effective. So fatigue is a persistent state of tiredness that's not relieved by rest or sleep. Um, it causes physical, emotional, cognitive challenges. Um, oils that can be supportive for this are lavender. So um, lavender supports relaxation aromatically, but also um, topically. And researchers have found that doing a foot soak with Epsom salts and lavender essential oil followed by a foot massage with lavender oil and a carrier oil really effectively relieved fatigue. Um, peppermint, basil, uh, and helichrysum have also proven effective in reducing mental exhaustion and then peppermint as well. So as you can tell, I don't know how everyone felt about when they inhaled the peppermint, but if you felt a little bit of energy, right? It's just giving that extra feeling of alertness, energizing, it's great just by simply just inhaling the peppermint oil. Um, nausea, so feeling nauseous is something that can be extremely uncomfortable and really affect uh, daily activities. Most commonly used oils for nausea and vomiting are peppermint, spearmint, ginger and lemon. Um, they can actually be effectively used just through inhalation as well. Um, can also be used topically, rubbed on the abdomen, diluted with a carrier oil. Um, you can use any of those oils individually. You can use them blended. Um, there was a recent review that showed really encouraging evidence for inhaling peppermint and ginger. Um, they both reduce the incidence and severity of the nausea and vomiting, but also decrease the need for antiemetic and improve patient satisfaction just overall. Um, so that's been, yeah, really, really, really good. I love, I love checking in on the research and just sort of seeing what's up and coming because there's more and more that's actually being developed now, which is great. Um, difficulty sleeping, it's another challenge. So sleep patterns are gonna change during the aging process anyways. Uh, and what's happening is really most people are getting insufficient time in that deep sleep stage of the sleep cycle, which leaves us feeling tired and groggy. Like even if we got a full night's sleep, you're just not getting that deep sleep. Um, and lots of other things, other physical, other emotional factors can also affect our sleep, right? So poor sleep often exacerbates other symptoms such as pain and mood disturbances. And then those in you know, affect our sleep, right? So it just becomes this cycle. Um, so three oils that can help with sleep are lavender, vetiver, and Roman chamomile. So there's a lot of research that exists on the benefits of lavender for sleep. Um, lavender helps the body get into the deeper part of the sleep cycle. Um, lavender pairs really well with other oils to enhance its benefits. So um, the blend that you have the purple lid on top is called Serenity. And that's um, doTERRA's restful blend. So they've you know, done the research and, and, and looked say, okay, what oils are combined? We're gonna make a blend and what oils are gonna benefit um, sleep and relaxation. And so it's a blend of lavender, vetiver, Roman chamomile, cedarwood, sandalwood, and ylang ylang. And so vetiver is actually um, can help increase GABA levels in the brain and the activity of GABA in the brain can help promote a restful sleep. 
And so you can use these, you can diffuse these. So it's great. That's why we talked about the diffuser, right? You can put, have a diffuser beside your bed at night. A lot of diffusers have intermittent settings so they can run all night. They'll do like five minutes on, five minutes off. And you can have that going beside the bed. You can, um, you know, put these, I usually put a little bit of serenity on my wrists before I go to bed. Um, I inhale it, sometimes I rub it on my temples. You can put it on the bottoms of your feet. All right, there's lots of different ways. Like I said, you can't, um, you know, you can't really go, go wrong. Um, as long as you're putting them on, diluting them. If you, you, know, you kind of test an area first, make sure you don't have any skin sensitivity. Um, yeah, and they're great for helping support sleep. So um, because the oils also support our emotions, right? They can um, help with stress. And sometimes if, if stress or your mind is going too quickly is a reason that you're not sleeping, they can help this. It's also not to say like, this isn't gonna put you to sleep during the day. So it's totally fine to use it during the day. It would help with relaxation and calming during the day. Um, but when your body is winding down and ready to go to sleep, it's gonna help support that natural. Um, process of going to sleep. And then focus and concentration. So um, rosemary is a great oil to improve focus and clarity, um, helps enhance the mood as well when it's inhaled. Basil, eucalyptus, those also support mental clarity um, on their own or combined with peppermint or spearmint. So again, peppermint is a great one um, that you can just inhale if you're just feeling like you need a little bit more focus um, again and rubbing it on the back of the neck. Any of those oils actually in the back of the neck there right at the base uh, is the occipital triangle and it's a great place to help um, support oils for focus and concentration. Okay, and then um, emotional challenges, right? So it's completely normal for someone with a life-threatening illness to feel all of these things as well as their loved ones. Like everyone is gonna go through all of these emotions. And research suggests that a quarter of the caregivers experience moderate to severe depression and a third experience moderate to severe anxiety symptoms, which highlights the need to really care for the whole support team, including healthcare professionals, I think, right? Um, there's a long history of use, you know, and, and scientific evidence now suggesting essential oils really excel at supporting these emotional challenges. Um, there is research that was done at the University of Liverpool. They used Roman chamomile uh, and they massaged people nearing the end of life in two studies. And they found significant improvements in the physical and psychological symptoms, as well as just an increase um, in the overall quality of life. And then another study found that hand massage with frankincense and lavender really positively affected depression and pain. Um, grief um, is another emotion. One of my favorite um, blends that doTERRA has for grief is called Console. And it has frankincense and patchouli and ylang ylang and sandalwood and rose. And so it's part of what's called the emotional aromatherapy system. And so there's different chemical constituents that really determine the effect that each oil is gonna have on someone. And so console, it's comp composed primarily of tree and flower components. Um, these are really rich in the constituents that are gonna support um, our emotions are gonna be grounding and renewing, which make it really helpful for reducing angry feelings, sad or hopeless feelings as well. So I love, I love that one. I wish, wish you could also have it. <laughs> um, fear, another one. So fear might be related to several aspects um, of the journey. Roman chamomile, again, is a great one for that. Cedarwood, ylang ylang, lavender, vetiver. Um, they're often used to reduce feelings of fear. Um, Serenity, the oil that you have, has all of these oils in it. So it can be a supportive um, blend for, for at, like any of those ones. Like you, you could use it as a replacement for any of those if you don't have the individual oils. And then part of the experience really is finding an oil or a blend that you're drawn to and that you enjoy the aroma of because it's something that you're going to find benefit from and you're going to want to smell it as well, right? So um you can, you know, it's just something you can have with you all the time and it's going to help comfort you. Um, anger as well. So, um, you know, especially this is common for those who are diagnosed with a life threatening illness sooner than they expect to be. Um, so, anger, it's not constructive and it's often directed at those we really love the most. And so, helping um, control that is, is, is a good thing to do. And so, Roman chamomile, lavender, helichrysum, peppermint vetiver, you kind of hear some of the same 
same oils coming up over and over, right? Um, even mandarin oils are really, really um, helpful at addressing anger. So again, the serenity would be helpful with that, has the vetiver, the Roman chamomile, the lavender in it. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want you to be able to take a little bit of what we've learned um, and then you'll be able to use these little samples in your day-to-day -day after we leave each other. And so I've given you some tips. I mean, trying to give you like the basics without being overwhelming um, throughout the presentation, but hopefully you can see like how easy they are to use, right? Um, one of my favorite little tools is the nasal inhaler. So you all have one of those in your package. So it's really good for creating a personal aroma that's easy to take with you, right? You don't have to take all your little oil bottles with you. Uh, and it's good for all environments, especially if you're in a scent-free environment. Um, it's really great because it's just the oils are in here. You smell them, and you put the lid back on. You're not putting them on your body for everybody else to smell. Um, although I do have to say, I find that when essential oils are really pure, like the example of peeling an orange, they don't give the same reactions to people as synthetic fragrances do. Um, but it's always important to respect the policies wherever you go. But I do find that the pure essential oils um, tend to be a lot gentler and more well-received. Um, the other way you can, can do that is putting them on the bottoms of your feet. So before you put socks on, just putting them on the bottoms of your feet and then you don't really give off any scent as well, but you get the benefits of the oils. Okay, so if everybody wants to get their little inhaler out, I'll just show you all the little parts and how you can make it and what the options would be. So the little part on the bottom just comes out and then the lid screws on. So if you just take the little bottom piece out inside, you'll find there's a little wick in there. And this is what you're gonna put the oils on and then they keep the smell. So if you wanted to, with what you have, if you wanted to make a uh, inhaler for energy or for focus, then you could put peppermint and wild orange on the wick. If you wanted to make something for nausea, you could put ginger and or peppermint. Uh, and then if you want to make something for sleep or stress, then you could use serenity. So um, what you can do too, is if you want to know what they're going to smell like together, just take the lids off of, of the little, both of the little drams and put them beside each other. Like if you're like, oh, I wonder what ginger and peppermint would be like together, or do I just want ginger, right? You can just take the, take the samples and kind of put them under your nose. Yeah. And then once you know what you want to do, um, you don't need a lot. So you probably only need two drops each on there. So just remember when you're tapping the bottom, you're getting a quarter drop. So for two drops, do eight, eight taps. So just put it, I'm gonna make an energy. So just do tap, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's a little bit easier with these bottles because the big, the big drops come out, but. Okay, and then once you've done that, um, you'll smell them on the wick. Just put the end of the wick that you put the oils on in first, drop it in. And then that little bottom piece, you can just push that on. It will push on pretty tight. I usually turn it over and press it down into my table to get it in all the way. And then you can use like a Sharpie or make a little label and you can, you can put it on there. You can write on the bottom what it is. And then if you unscrew the lid and smell it, you got your nasal inhaler and you can take that with you wherever you go. It's great to have. So the other little treat in there, if case you weren't here at the beginning is their ginger digestive drops. So they're good at supporting digestion. Um, they're just organic cane sugar, organic brown rice syrup, ginger oil, and lemon oil. And if anyone's counting, there's 15 calories and three grams of sugar in each one, just so you know. Important. <laughs> 
Good. Okay. So that's that. I'll have a look at the chat and see if there's any questions in there. And then what we'll do once I answer these ones, we can stop the recording. And then if anyone has any extra questions that weren't um, in the chat or that you want to ask, not on the recording, we can do that too. Okay. And yeah, so the bottom of the feet, I think I answered that, but I'll just explain it, it again. So the bottoms of the feet are a, not, a, not a very sensitive part of our body. So most people can put oils on the bottoms of the feet and they're not going to have a sensitivity reaction. I haven't, like in my all my time using um, doTERRA, I mean, other than like I've put cinnamon on by accident without... Um, diluting it and it might skin got a little bit red but then just putting carrier oil on it may, makes it go away so bottoms of the feet are just less sensitive um, plus if you do look at the principles of reflexology um, you know different parts of our feet have access to um, to all parts of our body um, yeah best carrier oil I mean there's you can use almost anything fractionated coconut oil is probably the best one um, yeah so fractionated coconut oil is just coconut oil that stays liquid. So you can use, I mean, there's food grade and there's non, non food grade as well. Like if you have um, heard of like MCT oil, that's coconut oil that is, that stays liquid as well. That works fine. Um, but you, that would be one that you can also take that you can also ingest, but um, most fractionated coconut oil that we use with essential oils would be like the non food grade kind. And you, you can buy that um, at, I mean, different, I, I get mine through doTERRA, but you can buy them from different, there's a place in um, Langley and why it's the names escaping me right now, um, Voyager Soap and Candle, they sell different supplies for making things and they sell fractionated coconut oil, but you can just go to the grocery store and buy the liquid coconut oil there as well. And yes, can you put a drop of orange oil in yogurt? Yes, that is an awesome way to flavor plain yogurt. So you could put a drop of orange oil in your yogurt and try that, yeah. And yes, it's okay to use with hot liquids. I wouldn't use it with boiling because you will, um, like you would destroy some of the particles that way, or they would flash off faster because they all have different, different rates of, of flashing. Um, but I, if I'm making my tea, I usually just, like I have a kettle where you can see the temperature. So I just usually do about 60 um, degrees or if you're just, you know, stop it before it boils and use it that way. And yeah, at a drinkable temperature. Um, can I send the recipe? Yeah, I can send the recipe for sure for the massage oil. Yeah, and anything and the recipes I discussed, sure. And yeah, so different um, proportions for essential oils and carrier oils. So it depends a bit on age and and what you're doing it for. Generally, like if I'm if I'm just using something as a one off, I'll put one drop. Usually, one drop is all you need. Um, I will put one drop in and just put some carrier oil in my hand to dilute it and then rub it on the area. And then if I'm making a roller bottle like this, um, I, this is a 10 mil roller bottle. Um, usually it's about 30 drops of essential oil and then the rest filled with fractionated coconut oil. So if you were doing a blend of something that had three different oils, you could do 10 of each. And there's different recipes out there that you would find for, for different things. And yes, eight taps is two drops. That's right. Um, the inhalers, you can purchase them. Lots of things are available online. I mean, there's not as many supply stores around. I think there is one on, on Main Street. I can't remember what it's called. Um, there's, there's different places online. Um, these I ordered from a company called My Essential Business. They're out of Toronto. You can get them on Amazon as well. No. Good. And for a good book. Um, yeah, let me show you what I use. <laughs> There's a few different things. What I used a lot for this presentation, this is a good book. It's called Evidence-Based Essential Oil Therapy. Um, it's by Scott Johnson. He's a great 
resource. He also wrote uh, a book on end of life care and essential oils. For what I use, I use this book. It's called Advanced Oil Magic. That also has some good information in it as well. And what did you say is the best for immunity boost? Um, so to support our immune system, um, lots of people use oregano, can use tea tree as well.